how much have you studied the pass rush moves that you used effectively in college? Just maybe on your own at night watching tape and determining, okay, these are going to work at the NFL level, maybe against this opponent. These aren't going to work. How much of that self-evaluation alone have you done either in your mind or watching tape? Yeah, I mean, I'd say uh, <clears throat> my game is constantly evolving. Um, you know, they, they kind of always say with pass rushers that they're like pitchers, right? You got to have a good fastball and a good off speed. Um, and so, you know, for me, it's just kind of figuring out what works for me uh, and what works against, you know, different type of tackles. And it's, it really changes every week because, you know, obviously different tackles are going to have different sets, going to use their hands differently. Uh, and so you just kind of, you know, have to do business as business is being done uh, and just attack everybody differently. Uh, so I don't, I don't really watch college tape, like my own college tape anymore, uh, unless I want to reminisce a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm just definitely, you know, continuously trying to improve my game and figure out what works. Speaking of college and reminiscing a little, when, when you threw it off the other day, did you, you hear yeah. how much louder the place might have gotten than oh, usual? Yeah. I, I knew I knew that was about to happen. I did, I did it for the fans. Right? Got to represent. So that was fun, though. I was talking to uh, one of the offensive linemen before the game. I was like, yeah, you know, when I get a sack, I'm going to throw it to you, see what happens. So. Called your shot. Yeah, exactly. What are your thoughts having to chase down Lamar on Thursday night? I'm going to be running a lot. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's Lamar's a great, great player, uh, dynamic guy, obviously. And so uh, you just have to be really disciplined when you're playing a guy like that. Uh, and so it's going to be key for us edge players. Um, to, you know, be sound in our techniques and our fundamentals uh, and just, you know, do what we're being coached to do. So it's going to be a fun one. Yeah. Following, on, following up on Al's question of some of your veteran teammates kind of talk to you about the like, do's and don'ts of chasing a guy. In, in, in uh, you just have to be, uh, like, sound, like I said, in your, in your fundamentals and techniques. Like, uh, you know, we're always taught, you know, not to jump when they're pump faking and, you know, to make sure you're, you're chasing their upfield shoulders so that they don't spin out and, you know, you lose contain. And so uh, there's just different techniques to try to contain a guy like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, like I say, he's an extremely dynamic, probably most dynamic player in the league. Um, so we're definitely going to, you know, have to have to be on our game. I mean, in a... You know, they do a lot of misdirection in the backfield and pull in, pull in line and then kind of leaving guys uh, free to, to kind of read them on those option plays. I guess how hard is it when you're so used to kind of just, just breaking on quarterbacks is it to like remain disciplined? And you, you're on a short week as well. How, how difficult is that? Yeah, I mean, we just we just have to, you know, really lock in and, and make sure we're on our game in terms of watching film and studying these guys. Um, but, yeah, it definitely changes up the game a little bit. Um, you know, you got to make sure, like I said, you're disciplined. Discipline is the number one thing. It's eye discipline. It's, you know, discipline in your feet, making sure, you know, you have your weight under you so you're not just, you know, flying around. Um, so it definitely changes the game up a little bit. Um, but, you know, we, we prepare for these type of things. So. I know you stood up some last year, obviously stood up as a linebacker at UCLA. But the adjustment, Jalen, going from hand in the ground as a rusher to standing up, how has it gone from July to now? Is there a point at which in the last couple months where, where you felt like I'm getting a lot more comfortable doing it this way? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd say even last year or some, I would, I would stand up. Uh, it just gives you kind of a different vantage point. It allows you to, to see a little better. Um, so I'm really comfortable doing, you know, at either technique, doing whatever I need to do, playing inside, you know, doing four eye, three tech, like whatever it is. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'd, I'd say I'm definitely comfortable doing anything. You probably played some big Thursday night games in the ACC, Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. my, one of my favorite environments was always Miami at Virginia Tech on Thursday night. Yeah. I don't know if you had one of those, maybe Virginia. one or two. I don't, even no? know, honestly. I don't know. I don't think Saturday. we. I don't even know. I don't think we played on Thursday last last yeah, year. Yeah. It was Saturday. Saturday, yeah. Just, I remember that game for sure. The idea yeah. of playing, you know, uh, a night game <clears throat> when you're the only game in town, the only game on TV, is that appealing to you? Yeah, I mean, it's prime time. It's, it's going to be awesome. Uh, playing under lights, it's almost like, you know, Friday night lights. It's like take you back to those days back in high school. Um, so it'll be fun, a little change up. Um, but so, yeah, you know, Sunday's best day of the week because, you know, that's when you get a play. So now we just get Sunday four days earlier. So it's nice. <laughs> Jalen, I'm doing a story on uh, Steven Rivera, a.k.a. the Canes Barber. Mm -hmm. You know, just talk about him being, you know, part of the team. You know, you've known him now from your college days. Now he also cuts here. Just how part of the team he is for you over the years. Yeah, yeah. funny enough, I actually uh, hit him up the first time I ever came to University of Miami. Uh, he, because I just had heard from a friend that he was the basketball team's barber, and so I was on my little visit. I wanted to get fresh and stuff, so I hit him up, and that was the first time I met him. Um, but you know, I'm learning about him as a man, like he's extremely involved in the community. 
uh, an extremely hard worker, passionate guy. Um, and so we've become kind of close friends and, uh, you know, I'm loyal to him as a barber. I don't go to anybody else. So, <laughs> but uh, I actually got the chance to, sh he's, you know, working on kind of a show uh, where, you know, he's, it's basically like, uh, you know, LeBron's, uh, like the barbershop talk kind of thing where he's just, you know, chopping it up about real life things. And I think that's, a, you know, an awesome thing to, to give, you know, some athletes the opportunity to share their story and for him to share his own story. Um, so, yeah, love the guy. It's awesome. People are particular about their barbers. <clears throat> Sometimes barbers can be like their psychologists. Is Steven like that kind of guy because like part of the team? With you guys? Yeah, I mean, he, he's definitely a guy you can chop it up with about anything. Uh, he's, you know, a personable guy, and uh, I really enjoy hanging out with him. And, you know, I, I know everybody appreciates, you know, his time and his dedication and how often he comes down here, you know, he'll pull up to your house, wherever you are. Um, so, yeah, great guy.